Baptist Church. So when will the rapture occur? You might be surprised how quick it will be. So I'm going to give you some amazing insights that some people probably never heard of before. If you're a Bible believer and you've dug into our materials, you would probably already know by now some of them. But let's start off with Genesis chapter 2. The rapture could be much sooner than you think. It could be even, believe it or not, less than a month or even faster. That's how fast the rapture could be. So let me just start it off with this way. The first thing, how we can tell the rapture, would happen very soon is by Genesis chapter 2. The Bible says right here that the generations of the heavens and the earth created, right? The generations, and they time it by the seventh day. If all of the universe, their creation depends upon this timeline, so it doesn't go past seven, right? So the seventh day is the final. God didn't put an eight or a ninth. Then that means that like seven days in a week, we don't have eight days in a week, nine days in a week. It's seven. The system is built upon that, the universe. We can see that with Genesis chapter 1, 2, right? In Genesis chapter 1, the seasons, the timing, days, weeks, all of that, the universe depends on seven days. Notice right here. God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day uh, from the night. Let them be sign, season, days, and years. So everything of the universe right here revolves around our calendar system. And our calendar system, we don't allow more than seven days for one week. So seven is important. God doesn't go beyond seven. If that's the case, and the Bible says Another thing as 2 Peter chapter 3, the Bible says that God, when he does his timing, right here, notice the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Okay, so that's his coming. His coming, notice right here that the Bible says, be not ignorant of this one thing, one day with the Lord as a thousand years, thousand years as one day. So the coming of God depends upon the time, uh, the time, excuse me, the kind of time, all right, that's what I meant to say, the type of timing, about a day being a thousand years. Okay, now to God, he doesn't do more than seven, right? There's something special about seven. Uh, we've seen that in Genesis chapter two, God sanctified it. Notice right here, God blessed the saint, seventh day and sanctified it. So there's something very important. He ended his work, rested on the seventh day from all his work which he made, right? Also said that this is depending upon the generations. These are the generations of the heaven and the earth when they were created. So understanding the entire universe is built upon a day's system where it doesn't pass seven days a week. It's built upon that. There's no doubt about that from the scripture. It's also indisputable from 2 Peter 3. God's coming depends upon one day as a thousand years. Then meaning, if that's how God does it, he can't go past possibly 7,000 years for his coming. Why? Because he doesn't go past seven days right here. For some weird reason, God doesn't uh, build his day system past seven. He does it seven days a week. If it's seven, and then one day is a thousand years to God, then that's 7,000 years. Okay, if it's 7,000 years, we already went through 6,000 years of human history. The leftover 1,000 years is God's millennial kingdom on the earth. He has to reign a thousand years on the earth. And then what happens after the millennium, the earth and the heavens have to be gone, evaporated. Second Peter chapter 3, notice right here that the heavens have to pass away. The earth is burned up. So it'll be gone. And then God's going to create new heavens, new earth. Why? We know that the millennium, which is 1,000 years reign on earth, has to occur before God destroys all the heavens and the earth. If that's the case, then that means 
there's got to be 6,000 years of human history with 1,000 years in the millennium. Okay, well, 4,000 years in the Old Testament, 2,000 years in the New Testament. We are right now in 2023, right? So 2,000 years should have been passed, meaning, which confirms it, and people admit this when they study calendars, our calendars are off. So if our calendars are off, but people also know that we're not too far off in our calendars. Even though our current calendar system is messed up, it shouldn't be too many years far away from the actual right calendars, especially the biblical calendar right here, how the Jews calculated their days and their years. If we're not too far away and from God's calendar system or the right actual calendar, that means the rapture must be sooner than we anticipate. I mean, it's 2023, and God's going to come at the year 2000, it looks like, from the Word of God. But Hosea 6 also confirms this. In Hosea chapter 6, the Bible talks about the nation of Israel returning to the Lord. When they return to the Lord, it's specifically after two days He will revive us. Third day, He will raise us up. Okay, think about it. The Jews, they lost their nation uh, somewhere at the early ADs, okay? Uh, letter A and letter D, that's what I meant. And then if we pass two days after uh, they lost their nation and they return, why think about it? He revives us or he restores us. The nation of Israel is restored. Why? One day, a thousand years, and two thousand years. Then God's going to restore his nation of Israel fully. That's very, very close. Very, very close. So there's something to this. There's no doubt. There's something to this with um, 6,000 years of human history where God's timing everything and the seventh. Uh, if you read Peter S. Ruckman's book, Seven Sevens, it's very fascinating. It can show you more. But another clue concerning about the nation of Israel being restored and all that is Matthew chapter 24. When you read Matthew chapter 24, a lot of people would even admit this too, that the parable of the fig tree is referring to the nation of Israel being restored. So the fig tree is representing the nation of Israel, and when their leaves are uh, when its nation is restored or the leaves or it starts to bud, the Bible points out, so likewise ye, when ye shall see these things, if you see that, then know that it is near even at the doors. That's referring to Jesus Christ's coming. Okay, wow. So then his coming is when the nation of Israel starts to bud. But then it says, when ye shall see these things. So that's referring to the generation that sees that fig tree. The generation who sees that fig tree will be able to see it. How long is a generation? So think about it. The nation of Israel, we know that it started now. It started in 1948. And then the generation... They're able to see not just the fig tree or the nation of Israel starting to bud or where it started at 1948, but the generation will see all these things. So in other words, all the end times, the coming of Christ as well. That means we're not too far. So then a generation should last to see the nation of Israel starting and all the end times in Jesus coming. How long is a generation? So then Psalm chapter uh, 70, we'll point out right here, oh, excuse me, it's not Psalm chapter 70, Psalm, here we go. The book of Psalm will point out how long a generation is. It points out that a generation could last up to 70 or even 80 years, 70 to 80 years. The days of our years, a generation, three scores and 10, 70 years, and then, or it could be four score year, 80 years. Why think about how close we are. 1948, Israel started. Then 1940 plus, uh, 1948 plus 70. Why? We passed that, didn't we? We passed that. That would be the year uh, 2018, I believe, right? So that didn't work. Then maybe 80 years. 
If it's 80 years, then it's going to be 2028, right? So that means how close we are. All right, my battery is low, so I better wrap this up quickly. So 2028 could be the rapture, or it could be even closer. You might say, how so? I mean so close that we will live to see it. You and I will li live to see the day, and it could be even like maybe this week or this month. So let me show you right here. But even sooner than that. Because notice what Paul said. Paul, he is including himself right here. He says about the rapture, if we believe Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, Paul's including himself, unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. And then verse 16 is the rapture right here. So Paul's saying that we, including himself, will be able to live to see the rapture. In other words, obviously, Paul died, so he did not live to see the rapture, but he anticipated that the rapture could happen any moment, even at his time. So it's possible that the rapture could happen even now, even now, closer than you think. Paul anticipated that. That's how soon it is. You might say, why is that? The reason why is because the Lord, he could shorten his timing. If we go back to Matthew 24 about the end times and the tribulation, notice right here that the timing could be shortened. Notice right here, except those days should be shortened. God can uh, shorten the time, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. For God's elect, he can shorten the days. So that's really interesting to think about. God could shorten the days and then could happen any moment. Now, to have the rapture happen right now, or even sooner than you think, this is how you can get the rapture going, believe it or not. What's holding back the rapture? What can make the rapture happen right now? One possibility is this. Notice right here that we were talking about uh, the day of the Lord, right? Thief in the night, his coming, right? Notice the... Verse 4 as well, where is the promise of his coming? So, where is the promise of his coming? Where is he at? What's taking him so long? Look at this. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. So God's not holding back on his promise of his coming. He's not slack on it. What's he waiting for? Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He's giving every last soul a chance who is capable of receiving Christ and getting saved. So he's waiting for them to get saved first, and then when they get saved, he can sound that rapture. Or here's another possibility, all right, how he can sound the rapture. Enoch is a type of the Christian church. How did he get raptured? And Enoch walked with God, and he was not for what God took him. God raptured Enoch because he had a good walk with the Lord. Some of you might be discouraged that, well, my walk with God is not that good. But notice right here, Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah, 300 years. So notice right here, Enoch lived 65 years, begat Methuselah. He was 65 years old. And then he began his walk with God. And his walk with God lasted uh, 300 years after that. So he started late, 65 years old. He started his walk with God. And then, because of his walk with God, God liked it, and he raptured him. Meaning, my friend, it's not too late for you. You can, no matter how late you are, I mean, no matter how late you are in years, you it's never too late to start your walk with God. And as you walk with God, you might be surprised. God might like it and just rapture you, for God took him. That's why it makes sense why 1 Thessalonians 4 mentions that about the rapture. So this is the rapture passage again we read, right? That's why it points out right here that uh, it talks about doing your business, your work. Uh, it talks about right here walking honestly. Uh, notice right here, brethren increase more and more. Taught of God to love one another. He's encouraging people to do the work of God. Make sure you do the work of God because I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren. 
He puts a but here, contrasting these previous verses in Christian labor. So it's important to do your Christian labor. Why? Because he doesn't want you to be ignorant. The rapture could happen any moment, the next verses read. That's why if you start your work for God right now, you might be surprised. Don't be ignorant. The rapture could happen. So start serving the Lord. If you serve the Lord really well, you might be surprised. God might just rapture us sooner than you think, even right now. Lord bless you. I hope that this video has been a blessing to you.